air travel generates 3% of global carbon emissions, and that number is expected to triple by the year 2030. Each week in our Thought Leader segment, we'll take you to meet someone who is thinking way outside the box to solve a critical social problem like climate change. This week, Tracy Palangin takes you to MIT's Aeronautics and Astronautics Laboratory to meet a man who is attacking the problem of carbon and sound pollution from airplanes from an entirely different angle. While most of us are thinking about more fuel-efficient engines or simply traveling less, Mark Drella of the Aero Astro Lab is lightening up and designing a green flying machine. Well, I've been interested in airplanes all my life, uh, since I was a little kid. That love of airplanes has taken MIT professor Mark Drella from playing with model airplanes to designing the most environmentally friendly plane ever built. What is the new green airplane that you're working on? The idea there is to uh, make, uh, see how little fuel you can burn to carry a plane old people across the country, for example, is one of the missions we considered. And that has to do with uh, developing, you need to develop technologies, uh, new uh, aerodynamic concepts, new engines, all the things that go into making an airplane go. The new plane could represent a fundamental shift in commercial aviation. In the history of aeronautics, when was the last time the passenger aircraft went through a new design? Uh, it's been quite some time. <laughs> if you look at the, uh, any uh, jet you see flying overhead or an air, at an airport, they look pretty much, uh, superficially, they look the same as the Boeing 707, which is the first modern jet, and that was built in the 50s. If you look at the engines more closely, the new engines are much, much bigger. So this is one of the reasons that we essentially redesigned the airplane for the new class of engines. Uh, as opposed to the new engines being retrofitted on an old design. NASA has funded the project in an effort to create new technologies that will help guide the agency's aeronautics research over the next quarter century. Mark, describe this airplane. What does it look like? Some people have referred to it as the double bubble. Right. It's, it's somewhat different from a conventional uh, jetliner in the sense that it's, it's a, first of all, it's, it's a, the same size as a Boeing 737, which is a typical airplane you would take from Boston to LA, for example, cross country. It carries 180 passengers, so it's a mid-sized airplane, and has two, uh, two aisles instead of one. And the fuselage is essentially two cylinders put side by side, That's, hence it looks like two sub bubbles stuck together from the front. That's why we call it that double bubble name. What about the wings? The wing, it, it looks different in lots of other ways. The wings are unswept uh, and it can be, uh, in other words, they're straight across instead of swept back like in conventional jet. Uh, that has a number of advantages. It, it's lighter, it saves drag, saves weight, and that's part of the advantages of, uh, of uh, burning less fuel. That's one of the reasons it can burn less fuel. The D-Series double bubble is expected to use 70% less fuel than today's commercial planes, while also significantly reducing emissions. Tell us a little bit more about noise levels and the silent technology. Uh, this new airplane actually ends up being much quieter than it, the airplane replaces, the Boeing 737 replaces. Uh, for the simple reason is if it uses half as much fuel, it'll just probably generate about half as much noise. <laughs> so that's a lot of it. But there's also a lot of benefits uh, from its configuration. The engines are on top instead of on the wings. That makes it quieter. And there's that's a lot of little details that make it quite less still. So it's almost, a, it's almost silent in the sense that it's very difficult to hear outside the airport boundaries. But don't expect to be hopping on a double bubble on your next trip. Drella and his team are only a year and a half into a decade-long process that costs billions of dollars. Our next uh, goal is to uh, do some wind tunnel testing of, a, of a, uh, maybe a one-fifth scale model of this thing in a wind tunnel. And if that passes, if it, you know, if it performs as, ex as expected in the wind tunnel, then I think uh, the airplane companies will be really interested at, at um, actually carrying it forward. And then they would take over and actually build the actual airplanes. Wow.